Hello and welcome back to The Pomegranate Girl. Um, this is a podcast where I talk about knitting and sewing and my creative endeavours as a whole. And I also talk a bit about reading as well. Um, so welcome back. This is my second episode and I just wanted to quickly say before I get stuck into things, thank you so much for such a lovely uh, response to my first episode. I was super nervous, um, as you can definitely tell in that um video so it's really good to be back and yeah I just wanted to say a massive thank you I've got some more thank yous at the end but that was just really lovely and it really encouraged me and yeah thanks that's really nice of you all to be so lovely and I've just had it's amazing to have so many nice comments from all around the world and places like Canada and Denmark and places that I'd love to visit so thank you um today I'm coming to you from Bristol in the southwest of England um where I've been living for the past couple of years and it's a bit rainy here so I hope the weather's okay uh, not weather but I hope the lighting is okay um I have got a side light on but I just yeah wanted to crack on with things um I have a half day on Friday which is when I'm recording this so at least I get some daytime light because to record because now we're in winter uh the sun sets at about half four so which isn't as bad as in other countries but it just means very long evenings which I'm happy with about. Um, so this is my drink of choice today in this mug, mystery mug. Um, I've got a mince pie tea which is from Seeky Tea. Um, if you follow Emma Robinson from the Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company you probably know about Seeky, she talks about them quite a lot. Um, and this is one yeah I bought, <laughs> I was fully influenced by her and I bought one of some of their teas last year and this is a mince pie one. Has anyone eaten a mince pie yet? I need to know because I've been eating them since October and I'm loving life. This is really nice. Um, I've just got that with some oat milk. So yeah, that is, get, let's try not to ramble as much as I did last time. Let's just get stuck in. Oh, and before, actually before I get stuck in, um, you might notice I've got a lovely wool blanket behind me. It's got in pretty chilly uh, down here so in Bristol so the wool blanket is out so it's officially knitting season which I'm very happy about so yeah uh, now all of that's done let's get started so I have only got one finished object to show you this week just because I've been doing some other knitting which is finished but I can't show it to you yet so hopefully in the next episode you'll get to see some of that um, so yeah, the first one is one that was nearly finished last episode and it is these Lopper socks by Fibre Tales and yeah, you'll have seen them in the last episode and I finally finished them and they have been on my needles for months. So it was really nice to get them off the needles and they're blocked. I haven't worn them yet because I was saving them for the podcast. Um, these are knit out of, uh, the pink is Mondeem, not sure what the colour is. Um, the West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4 Ply and then some Arvetta uh, for the dark brown and sorry the West Yorkshire Spinners is the white colour I think in the colour marshmallow. Um, these just have this really beautiful little flea stitch detail um, they've got a eye of partridge heel if you can see that um, and yeah just really nice simple colour work socks I'm really looking forward to wearing these. I will definitely be knitting a pair of these again. Um, they're just really nice. They're really like quite addictive. You just kind of want to get to the next little section of colour work, even though it's like quite a simple repeat. Um, so yeah, I might, my next pair, I might have a dark background and a light contrast colour. I think that would look really nice. I've seen some nice projects on Ravelry using that kind of colour scheme. So yeah, these are my finished objects. And now I can wear these on my feet. And yeah, looking forward to wearing them. And um, yeah, I'm interested to see how the Mondine wears. It's obviously only in the toe and the heel. Um, so yeah, I'm interested. I've heard mixed reviews about Mondine, which is a Portuguese non-superwash, no nylon sock yarn. It's fully Portuguese wool. Um, I've, yeah, I've heard some people absolutely love it and some people found it's worn really quickly. Um, so yeah, interested to see how that goes. Um, and I've also got another ball of it so I'll probably knit, I've got plans to knit another pair of socks completely in that Mondine yarn. Um, so yeah, we'll see. But yeah, finished object number one. 
wow, we're doing good for time. Um, I've also written notes myself so that I don't get too sidetracked. Um, so let's move on to whips. Uh, so I've got a few whips. As I said earlier, I can't show all of them to you because there's gifts, there's some test knitting. Um, but the first whip is housed in this lovely bag. This is a new addition um, to like my little <laughs> project bag collection. Wouldn't really call it a collection. It's quite small. And this is by Harriet from Wildwood Stitches. She is so lovely. I've spoken to her quite a few times on Instagram. I've followed her for ages, but I had never bought one of her project bags. And she did a collaboration with the yarn dyer Marina Stewart, who's also a knitwear designer and all around lovely human. And they did a collaboration at the end of October, halfway through October. And this bag was part of it. So I'll talk more about that collaboration later, but yeah, this is, housing my first whip and it is yeah this Harris tweed and uh cotton tote bag and it's tote bag project bag and it is so lovely um I yeah I just I although I could sew obviously nothing is quite as beautiful as this but I can could sew a project bag for myself I just don't really want to spend the time like I have precious crafting time and I don't really want to spend it making project bags so it's really nice to be able to support makers who can do a much better job than I could and who use really beautiful fabrics like Harriet does so yeah let's open this up um it's also got really beautiful lining as well and you can see here the Harris Tweed logo and um, so yeah my first whip is actually missing its cord <laughs> didn't realize that and it is the DRK Everyday Socks. <laughs> it looks a bit funny at the moment, but <laughs> I have just reached the gusset increases. So these are toe-up socks. They're by Andrea Mari and of Drea Renee Knits. And it's a toe-up ribbed sock pattern. Um, and I'd never knit toe-up socks before. So in my last episode, I'd knit, I think, only probably up to here, just like the toe. And now, yeah, I'm almost at the foot part. And I took these when I went um, to Exeter with my boyfriend um, for a quick trip to see his family. And I took these on the train with me and just for some knitting whenever I had a spare moment. Um, and yeah, it was just, was really nice to be able to knit on something really simple. Um, and these are knit out of one of my favorite sock yarns, which I spoke about in my first episode. Um, and it is Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company Natural Sock, which is a four ply sock yarn. It's non superwash, it's no nylon, um, it's 50% Chevia and 50% BFL. I spoke quite a lot, I think, in my last episode about how much I love uh, natural sock yarns um, that don't have any kind of plastic content in them, so no nylon and no superwash process. Um, this is just a personal preference. Uh, I just prefer how they kind of feel on my feet and I personally haven't had any wear issues um, but if you're interested in me talking about non super socks and no nylon socks maybe I could do a whole video kind of talking about them and showing you how mine have worn because I'm pretty hard wearing on my socks I wear them in boots all the time um, like do loads of walking in them so if you want to see a whole video on that let me know. I don't know if that would be interesting to anyone. But yeah, this is the Natural Sock by Emma of Woolly Mama Fibre Company and the colourway Hibernation, which is a recent colourway and it's just this really beautiful lilac with some darker hints of purple and also some like really beautiful greeny yellow bits in it as well. Um, so yeah, up to, I haven't knitted on these in a while because I've been knitting on other things that I can't talk about. Um, and yeah but i'm hoping to get back to these once all those other projects are finished and i've got another bit of traveling coming up and also a work trip so i think these will be really good for that so that is whip number one which i have made say a fair bit of progress on since i last filmed um yeah be interesting i haven't done a toe up sock before so i haven't done any of the heels um so it'd be interesting trying to figure that out. So hopefully I can get all of that done before I do the traveling so that when I'm, you know, on the train or at this work um, trip, I can just do the really simple rib section. 
So my second whip that I can kind of talk about is my Talvinin sweater, which I am knitting for my mother for Christmas. Uh, my mum, I should say, because she'll get really annoyed at me if I call her mother. Um, and I showed this again in my last episode and I haven't made, again, a whole lot of progress, but I have made some progress. So here it is. If you watch my first episode, you'll, you probably won't notice much difference. Um, and it, yeah, this is a beautiful colour work sweater just with a colour work yoke. Um, Sorry if you can hear all those clicking of needles. And then it's also got this colour work section at the bottom. So this is knit out of Biche et Bouche, um, which is a French yarn company, I believe. But they this particular wool is um, Scottish lamb's wool, 100% Scottish lamb's wool. Um, it's really lovely to work with. I've never worked with it before, but it's gorgeous. It's really nice for colour work because it's quite sticky and like grippy. Um, but it's, I think it's quite soft. I don't really mind rustic yarns though um and it just is it's just so nice i can't wait to make something out of this wool for myself um and be selfish about it and um, so yeah i spoke about the colors last time in my first episode um but so the progress i've kind of made is i finished the color work section on the bottom with all these bubbles i think i was just at the bubbles when i last filmed my other episode and now I'm at the ribbing on the bottom and I have also made a small amount of progress on the sleeves. Um, so I'm now up to the second lot of shaping that you do on the sleeves. And so that will like really speed things up a bit. Um, so hopefully I can finish the body and finish one sleeve before next time. That's the little challenge I'm gonna set for myself. Um, and yeah, just still really enjoying this, just have had other deadlines to work to. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned this, but this is going to be a Christmas present for my mum. So I obviously have the deadline of probably a week before Christmas because I want to <laughs> give myself a week to block it and for that to dry. Um, but yeah, really beautiful, still really enjoying it. I'm just really hoping that once I finish my other kind of secret projects I can get back to this and really focus on it um but yeah still massively enjoying it it's a really beautiful pattern it's by Caitlin Hunter if I didn't say so already who's Boyland Knitworks um and yeah using the recommended wool I'm using the recommended needle sizes although as I said in my last episode I have knitted this so I'm knitting a size six in order to obtain a, what will hopefully be a size four jumper um, because my gauge was so different so I did some maths and I looked up how to kind of recalculate what size I would get with the amount of stitches I was getting per four centimeters um, no ten centimeters sorry four inches and yeah so fingers crossed it's, it seems to all be working out so far and I think once I block it um, it'll and if it doesn't, hopefully it won't expand too much. Um, I obviously did do a, gauge, a few gauge swatches and blocked them all, um, but it's always a little bit different when you've got a whole jumper. So hopefully, it definitely fits my mum. It's more just I'm hoping it doesn't grow too much. Um, she has tried this on, she's seen it, it's not a surprise. Um, so yeah, mum, if you're watching this, <laughs> I hope you enjoy this eventually. Um, but I definitely will get it done before Christmas. Um, it's more just I want to get it done so I can be selfish and knit on things for myself. So yeah, that is all the knitting I've got to talk about, which is kind of surprising. I suppose it's because I've got these other things that are going, <laughs> that are taking up my time. And I'm really sorry if that's annoying to talk about things that to be so mysterious, but um yeah i will be able to talk to you about them in the next episode hopefully so now i'm going to move on to acquisitions um just they're just yarn acquisitions um and kind of future plans as well because i try not to buy yarn if i don't have plans for it um that doesn't always happen but that is what i try to do um so yeah let's talk about the first skein I've got and this is another gift knitting supply and this is the Bear in Sheep's Clothing Bear Masham, Masham? 
DK, um, which is 75% blue face luster and 25% mid brown massum or mashum. I think it is massum. Um, and this is beautiful. It's so like bouncy. And this is the shade Coniferous, which is like this beautiful khaki dark green, kind of similar to this colour actually. I'd say a bit, maybe a bit more uh, blue toned maybe. It's slightly, it's a slightly different shade. Um, but this is for a hat for my aunt. So I offered my aunt, uh, I think I offered her a hat or a snood or something some kind of knitted accessory for Christmas and she said she wanted a cabled hat so I sent her a few patterns she chose one and she chose the scissor hat I believe that's how you pronounce it which is by Claire Walls and um, also known as Flossy Knits um, she's got a podcast actually which I'll leave linked down below and yeah she chose that and the wool um, I think it's like a Tulliver's wool which is I so I sent, so the, yeah, she decided the pattern and then I sent her a few different colour options for wool and basically I just ch chose a few different DK weight Mashem BSL mixes like with the right composition as the original pattern had and yeah, she chose this lovely one here and I've always wanted to try yarn from Bear in Sheep's Clothing. They do, I think they do a non-super wash or no nylon sock yarn that I've really wanted to try um, and this colour is beautiful. Um, yeah, so this is a British wool CK, so it's 240 metres per 100 grams, and you only need one skein for this hat. Um, so I'll have inserted a little picture so you can see what it looks like. Um, so yeah, hopefully, once I've finished a bit more of my jumper, I will, for my mum, I will start the hat. Um, it should be pretty quick, it's DK weight, it's a hat, I reckon I could get that done before Christmas. Probably, hopefully, imagine two weeks ish um once I've started it um but yeah I will probably once I film this I will probably wind this boy up and get swatching um because I do try to swatch for most projects if it's a shawl less so but something for a hat especially when it's with someone else I do try and swatch um so I just want to make sure that the sizing's right for her and yeah really looking forward to working with this it is so bouncy and just oh so squidgy <laughs> um next up i will talk about another dk weight yarn i've got and this one is what i was referring to when i said about harriet and marina's collaboration that they did and this is a dk weight yarn from marina skewer so this maria marina sorry dyed this up um especially specifically for the collaboration that her and Harriet did and this is her Mendip DK which is actually really local to me so as I mentioned I'm in Bristol um I believe Marina's based in Bath which is where my family are from um and yeah this is the Mendip Hills are slightly south of Bristol and Bath um and I've been there it's a really gorgeous area i probably slightly biased because I live in the southwest of England um but it's a beautiful area and yeah the she uses a lot of local to her yarn and I just really love everything that Marina does and yeah this is the colorway hibernate which is interesting that's the name of the other yarn from Emma that I mentioned earlier and it's this yeah beautiful like rusty brown color I this probably isn't coming up very well on camera um, but it's a bit more maybe orangey, um, but it's gorgeous. So the collaboration included this one skein of DK weight yarn, um, Harriet's lovely bag, and then also a pattern that Marina had designed, which is the leaf nest pattern. And I'll pop a little image in here. And it's a beautiful like lace and cable pattern. And yeah, I'm definitely gonna be making that after I've finished all my gift knitting. Uh, story of my life and yeah it's just beautiful I've wanted to try Marina's yarns for ages um because they're so local um and I think what she does is awesome I love her designs as well I really want to knit some of her designs she's got a new one coming out next year which she has teased a little bit on her podcast and it's gorgeous and I'm so excited for it to come out um 
so yeah super excited to knit with this and I don't know if I said but this is 100% British wool um I'm not sure what the flock are comprised of I think it might be a Shetland mix but don't quote me on that but yeah excited for this to become a hat and yeah it's just such a beautiful colour and Marina was also listing um some individual skeins so if there's any left I will link it down below um because yeah I would really recommend if you can get your hands on it because or any of Marina's yarns because this just feels so lovely um and I'll definitely be getting some more from her in the new year I think um when I have plans for it and when I've got through some of my stash so I've got two more yarns to show you the first one is a sock yarn um, and it is a no nylon non super wash sock yarn that I have been wanting to try for months <laughs> that is not an exaggeration and it is Whistlebear Cuthbert sock and this is yeah a no nylon non super wash Northumberland grown British sock yarn and this is 80% uh, uh, whistle bears own mohair so they have they're up in Northumberland in the north east of the UK up in I think near Berwick upon Tweed perhaps could be wrong but up in that side of um, the UK and they have mohair goats um, I would really recommend following them on Instagram they post some lovely photos and I think what they're doing is really cool um, so yeah, it's 80% Whistlebear's own mohair and 20% Whistlebear's own Wensleydale wool. And it is, they have this unique um, kind of, yeah, sock yarn. Um, and it's got quite a high twist and it feels really interesting. It's kind of quite silky, which is kind of what I imagine from that mix of breeds. And this is actually a sport weight yarn. So this is 300 metres um, and to 130 grams and yeah this has been out of stock for ages I think they were getting a new batch spun so it's definitely been out of stock for the past like six months and they've just had some in in a smaller colour range than what they used to have um, and I was so excited that I ordered some straight away um, even though I definitely don't need any more sock yarn but I've just heard amazing things about this and I'm really just quite interested in um non super wash no nylon socks just for my own that is just my own personal preference that's what works for me i know it doesn't work for everyone um and yeah whenever i see the name whistle bear i think of lady whistledown in bridgerton does anyone else get that is anyone else a bridgerton fan let me know it's make me feel like i'm less alone <laughs> with that one i always want to call them whistledown um and yeah, this is the colourway Abbott's Jewel. I have to say, it's coming up pretty true to form on camera. Um, on the photos on the website, it must have just been my screen. It looked a bit darker. So this is a bit brighter than I'd usually wear. But that's quite nice. It's nice to have something new. And it's still a beautiful colour. Um, it's, yeah, it's really almost like quite pinky red, I think. But it's gorgeous. So... <laughs> Let's have another sip of tea quickly before I ramble on any more about yarn. Um, so the last acquisition I've got is a gift from one of my best friends who recently went to Norway. So she went to stay just outside of Oslo and I, she told me she was going. It was kind of a last minute trip for her and she told me she was going and I said, if you happen to be going past any wool shops or she wasn't there for very long so I didn't want to put any pressure on her I just said you know if you do happen to go go in any wool shops or walk past any and you have a spare few minutes would you mind picking me up some Norwegian yarn because it's something I've never tried and I'll pay you back and she really lovely lovingly love lovely of her um she bought me back some Hillesvark, I believe is how you pronounce it. Um, she actually did try to feign me from inside the wool shop to ask what I wanted. And I was very unhelpful and just said anything. <laughs> um, and yeah, she did a great job. And I did say, if you see any Hillesvark, which is kind of quite difficult to get hold of in the UK, although there are a few stockists, 
um i would love for her to pick me some up and this is what it looks like so this is by the company hillersberg i hope i'm pronouncing that right and i think this is solia solia i did try to look it up um before i started filming this and i found two different pronunciations of it so i'm not sure which one was right um so please correct me down below if i got that wrong and um, this is 100 percent um, norwegian wool and i think from listening to inga of knitting traditions who i'm sure you all follow um this is from made from the norwegian pelt sheep i believe and this is a fingering weight yarn it is Ooh, this is all in Norwegian. A hundred grams is who knows? There isn't any information on here. I believe it's about four hundred meters though, um kind of classic fingering weight. Um I'm not sure what colour this is. I think it might be I'm not gonna try and say the Norwegian, but I think it might translate as olive green, just from looking at that um yeah and it's this beautiful khaki color can you tell i have a kind of <laughs> color scheme that i like um yeah and she bought me back this and i'm really looking forward to knitting with it i'm not sure what i'm gonna do with it yet i was thinking maybe a hat or a pair of mittens um maybe with some color work um as this is a it's a no nylon no non superwash yarn um I wouldn't probably use it for socks because it's got a slightly looser twist from the looks of it and I just think it would be really nice to showcase it because the colour is so beautiful. I might even knit something and then give it back to the friend, maybe, unless I want to keep hold of it um, as like a little thank you. Um, but yeah, I'm just really excited to work with this and try it out and yeah, thank you. I won't mention her name in case she doesn't want me to but if she is watching this thank you for bringing this back um yeah it definitely feels a bit rustic but it's very squishy and oh yeah i'm really excited to knit with it and quite affordable um obviously if you're in norway i kind of seemed quite affordable what it is given that it's 100 grams i think i paid about 12 pound um once the conversion rate had gone through so yeah Really looking forward to knitting with this. And if you've knit with this before, maybe let me know some pattern recommendations. Um, because I yeah, I've only got one skein. Um, so yeah, please let me know your recommendations and if I'm pronouncing the names right, because I'm pretty sure I'm not. <laughs> so yeah, that is it for acquisitions slash future plans. And now let's move on to the sewing. So in my last episode, I talked about my orchard stress and i had nearly finished it i thought i might finish it for this episode and i haven't i've just been too busy um and the orchard's dress is a sleeveless dress i'll leave a link to it down below and it's a i've chosen view a which is like a really long dress i'll include what i'll do is i'll include a photo of the original pattern designer's photo and I'll also include maybe a little clip or a photo of me wearing it um, because it's a full, it's nearly full length on me. Um, so I won't be able to hold it up in the screen. Um, but this is what it looks like. So you've kind of got this like empire line bodice. Um, sorry, I'm trying not to cover up my mouth in case people are lip reading. Um, and then it's, yeah, got this gathered skirt attached to it and a tear on the bottom like a kind of ruffle at the bottom and yeah it's this collarless um design um so this is a placket here so as you can see i've done my buttonholes Ooh, you might not be able to see um yeah here are my buttonholes i just need to sew on the buttons um i've really enjoyed this i'm definitely going to make another one um although <laughs> It is now November and I have just sewn myself a long summer dress um, but I'll probably still try and wear this in the winter probably with a top underneath and like a cardigan or a jumper over the top just so I can like start wearing it and I love it so much that I don't want to leave it in my wardrobe until next spring when it's warm enough to wear on its own um, so yeah it's beautiful I mentioned last time this fabric is from Sony Sunshine which is a UK based online fabric store um, near London and 
it's a lovely shop. I buy loads of my fabric from there. It is a 50% linen, 50% cotton mix. And yeah, I've got this beautiful floral design on. I'm going to stop trying to hold it up because <laughs> I'm definitely failing. Um, it's been really nice to work with. It's quite fray. So I've done a lot of French scenes on the inside, which are kind of an enclosed scene, if you don't say. And um, yeah, I've just tried to do that because it is such a fray fabric and I don't have an overlocker um, and I just really like how French seams look as well I think it's really nice when you look in the side of garment and it's got French seams um, just personal preference so yeah just got to sew the buttons on that which I'll probably do this evening and then it'll be good to go and I can wear it and yeah I'll insert a full length picture here or here depending on how I'm feeling <laughs> um, so yeah one finished object roughly scrunched up not folded at all <laughs> um just how i treat things like treat my clothes generally and then i will show you what i'm working on at the moment sewing wise so i spoke in my last episode about the cornell shirt by elbe elba textiles which i'm making for my boyfriend for his birthday and i just showed you the fabric last time and a photo of the finished item like the finished shirt that the kind of designer provides and this is what I have got so as you can see I'm halfway through <laughs> doing quite a few things um again probably won't be able to show you but um in the next episode I'm sure I'll include a finished photo um maybe of it on him if he doesn't mind um and yeah it's this I think this is called a grandpa collar so there's no kind of uh you have the collar stand but you don't have a collar coming out um so a, you could call it like a collarless shirt and then it is a full placket um there's a version one version has a half placket and one has a full like button stand placket and i have sewn i think maybe half of this i've done if you can see i've done <laughs> this is not a good way of showing you my sewing i have to rethink this for next time um yeah, I've done the, I've set in the sleeves, um, which is done slightly differently. You don't really set them in. You sew in the, how should I describe this? You sew in, you sew the sleeves in flat basically, and then you sew up that long seam of the sleeve and then the side seam at the same time, um, which I quite like that method because it means no fiddling about with setting in a sleeve. Um, and yes I've done that I've well I've done half of it because again I'm doing French seams and so I've done the first of those seams so with a French seam you sew it twice so you sew you put your wrong sides together and you sew a line and then you trim those down you flip it so that the right sides are together sew another line flip it out so that it's the garments the right way out and you have uh, this enclosed seam um that kind of let's try and show you what that looks like um show you on here so it looks like this is my orchard dress um it looks like this if you can see um so that is actually a seam um, so yeah, it provides this like um, enclosed seam and it just makes things really neat. And also, again, this is a linen and cotton blend fabric, so it's quite fray. Um, so I like to have, I just like having enclosed seams on fabrics like that. Um, so yeah, then the pockets, I've started doing the collar. So yeah, I actually ran out of thread. I was saying this two days ago, ran out of thread um which is really annoying um because i didn't really have time to go into town because i work full time to buy a second school so i asked on instagram <laughs> as you do for haberdasheries that ideally independent haberdasheries that had really quick um delivery and harriet from wildwood stitches actually said jcots um, and it was super quick. I think I ordered it on Wednesday evening, like quite late on Wednesday evening, and it was here today, which is a Friday that I'm filming this. Um, so it was really quick. And I think it was only like £1.50 for postage, which is really reasonable. Um, so I'll definitely be using them again. Um, 
so yeah I can now carry on with this um, now that I've got more matching thread and yeah I put the label in I like adding labels to my clothes um, this one's from Kylie and the Machine and it just says made with love and swear words which is usually true I do tend to swear quite a lot when I'm sewing especially when things well always when things go wrong um, and yeah this fabric was from the Fabric Godmother um, I don't think they have it available anymore but she's got loads of beautiful fabrics um, she actually does her own range of fabrics as well um, which are beautiful so I would really recommend checking her out and I'll leave her linked down below I think her name is Josie the, the owner of that business so the last kind of topic I'm going to talk about is books um, I haven't made much progress to be honest I am still reading the Light Years by Elizabeth Jane Howard, which is volume one in the Cazalet Chronicles. Um, it's quite long, as you can see, I think it's about 550 pages and I am at page 500. So I've got about 50 pages left of this and then it'll be finished. I'm still really enjoying this. Um, it hit a bit of a dark point. Uh, there was something I just wasn't really expecting to happen, um, which kind of I didn't really want to then read it after that so I really need to but I have been slowly getting back into it um and thank you for your lovely comments um someone actually a few people told me that, that there was a tv series uh made of this a, I think in 2001 and I was looking at it this morning um it's, it's got like Hugh Bonneville quite a few famous people um Stacey from Gavin and Stacey is in it which is a British program uh, kind of like a British cult sitcom and yeah so I will definitely be watching that once I've read this book because I think it's just the first book um that they made an ad adaptation of this is if you didn't see my first episode this is about a family like a large well-off family who um and it's about all of their relationships with each other their lives um and it's kind of in this first book you're kind of leading up to the beginning of world war ii um so I love that kind of interwar period. It's one of my favourite periods to read novels from or about. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this and hopefully I'll have it finished by the next episode so I can read one of my many unread books that I have. So yeah, that is everything I had to talk about. Sorry, it wasn't much knitting. I feel like I've been doing a lot of knitting, but not a lot of talking about knitting in this episode. Um, but next time I'm sure I'll have lots more to show you and hopefully we'll get some of those acquisitions knitted up um, and have some more progress made on my Talvinin. Um, before we go, I just wanted to say a massive thank you again to all the really lovely comments I had on my first episode. I'm aware I was really nervous um, and playing a lot with my hair as well, um, but I just wanted to say thank you 